Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm a holistic nutritionist and high fat enthusiast behind the site healthfulpursuit.com and I help women regulate their hormones, balance their metabolisms, and generally be awesome by eating more fat. And if you see me bounce between you guys and here, it's just because I'm on Facebook Live over here and Periscope over here. I go live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. So if you miss any of the recordings, I upload them to YouTube. But if you can catch me live, that would be amazing. So we got a bunch of people on here today and we're going to answer your keto questions. So um, there was a question that just came in about what keto is. So keto is a low carb, high fat eating style. Um, my approach is a little bit different than the classic because I'm dairy free and uh, I believe in whole foods. So we're not counting a lot of the vegetables, we're not doing that thing. And I also um, uh, see the benefit for some people in carbing up at night. So that means having a bit more carbs in the evening so that you feel awesome. Hey Tiffany, I'm gonna grab a pen. Here we go, I forgot my little pen. I'm ready. I drink wine almost every day, is that bad? It depends, it really depends on your body. For me that would be horrible. I have seen that wine has helped with estrogen levels even in myself. Um, if you are going to do, now I'm going off memory here, um, it's best for wine to do more of the low carb, low sugar wines. And if I don't answer your question, guys, just keep a asking it because when I'm on a question, I don't read so that I can answer properly. So I'm sorry. Um, so for wine, um, there's uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is the white one that I like because it's like dryish and it's not as sugary. And then um, for the red, there's Pinot Noir. I believe that's a low carb one. So those are kind of like if I'm going to do it, I do the low carb stuff. Yeah, there is a question on Facebook. Hair loss from eating low carb. Okay, I want you to go to the Google. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the hair loss video. Um, I'll include a link up here if you're watching this on the replay. Um, but just go to Google and search Healthful Pursuit Hair Loss. Yes. And check that out. Um, Savon Blanc, I think, is what I meant. Sorry, guys, for the wine. Cabernet Sauvignon, I think that is a red wine. See, this is clear. I haven't drank in so long. So um, go for a low-carb wine. For the hair loss, um, it's likely that you're not having enough carbs and your body's reacting to it. Some people say that it's a detoxification thing uh, for keto. I don't believe that's the case. It happened to me and uh, it wasn't a good situation. So I would encourage you to watch my Google, um, just watch my YouTube video. Sorry, there's like so many trolls. We're just gonna, there we go. Um, watch my YouTube video on hair loss. Chances are it's impacting your thyroid slightly. It's nothing to be concerned about. It's just that you need more carbs. So that's why my um, my protocol has carbs in it at night. And that aligns with your circadian rhythms. I'm actually doing a podcast about this on Sunday. So if you follow the No Sugar Coating podcast, it's all about um, carb ups and the benefit. Uh, perimenopause here, keto two months, lost weight initially installed or stall and stalled. Is it cortisol? Um, so I actually just did a video about that, and I'm guessing because you're talking about um, weight loss stalls and cortisol that you watched my video on YouTube. Um, I will include a link uh, up in the corner up here if you're watching this on YouTube to that video. Otherwise, you can find it by going to the Google machine and type in Healthful Pursuit Weight Loss Stalls. Uh, so there could be a, a bunch of reasons why you're not losing weight. Um, menopause, now perimenopause, menopause, many, perimenopause is a little bit more of a challenge because you still have a little bit of hormone action happening. Um, but overall, um, what's happening is when we go into menopause, we don't have as many um, hormones to influence us. But 
But when we go into menopause, our adrenals are taking up all the action for our hormones. So our adrenals are now pumping out all the hormones that we need in smaller doses to maintain balance. So if you've been living a life completely stressful and your adrenals are already taxed, when you go into menopause, what often happens with these women is that they start to um, exhibit signs of weight gain and things like that because their adrenals aren't healthy enough to support um, the action that it needs to take place because uh, from my understanding when we are in menopause we're actually um, using our adrenals more I would assume just based on the fact that our adrenals are having to take up for all of that action so my advice to you if you're having weight loss stalls on menopause is that it's probably hormone related I, I highly doubt it has anything to do with keto and keto is probably uh, assisting with the balance and helping you um, do things and especially with that fat it's gonna help a lot so I would go to your doctor and get your cortisol AM test tested rather um, your DHEAS now it's gonna be lower than normal because you're aging and it lowers with age um, and yeah I would start with those because your DHEAS is gonna tell you whether or not your pregnant like what pregnant alone is doing and your cortisol will do the same vice says Shirley I'm sorry that you feel that way I highly encourage you about that um, there's a lot of information on there and scientific evidence that carb ups are actually pretty awesome for you um, so I included a lot of literature there's like over 20 references in that podcast and all the links will be there and you can read them and there's actually quite uh, good evidence that this is actually a good thing so it really depends on your body some people do better without carb ups some people love carb ups it totally depends um, how you feel uh, so is this diet only for women's hormone stuff because I don't need weight loss I'm under sorry I missed the last piece of your question could you ask that again you're under what sorry what are your thoughts of being pregnant and following a keto diet if you are pregnant right now and you're already eating keto I see nothing wrong with it but if you're pregnant and you've never eaten keto and all of a sudden you start eating keto I wouldn't necessarily recommend that I don't think that there's anything wrong with eating more fat but I wouldn't purposely get yourself into ketosis constantly I'm underweight so I want light and healthy diet to be able to eat since I have eating problems okay I'm going to answer that question in one moment um, and so if you're pregnant and you feel good with eating more fat eat more fat but I wouldn't um, purposely try to lose weight or anything like that while while you are pregnant uh, or breastfeeding for that matter so uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind um, and okay so we are gonna talk about um, more disordered eating or unhealthy relationship with food and how keto is good slash not good for that so the classic approach to ketogenic eating is a lot of tracking and macro counting and such so um, if you have a disordered eating with food or a disordered relationship with food that can be really stressful and cause a lot of triggering action so um, in my fat fueled program you can find that at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash fat fueled I'll include a link in the show notes uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and also in the corner or you can find it healthfulpursuit.com forward slash fat fueled and macro is macronutrients yes so you're counting everything that you're doing so my approach is not that you look at your plate you see if you have enough fat and your ace so I really like that approach because I came from a disordered place with my food and I refused to conform <laughs> I did the whole keto thing hardcore thing my hair was falling out my adrenals were a mess and I just said like screw this I need to come up with a better way and that's when I started testing and, and doing a lot of research uh, with the carb ups and to track to not to track so to answer your question yes totally totally you can do keto without counting um, and I have a really really exciting project that I'm working on right now um, that's going to bring this to the masses and anyone who's interested in keto but doesn't want to obsess about their food anymore um, will have an option out there for them um, because it's just crazy town 
And um, I think that's all I have to say about that. I hope that answered your question. Um, I added a lot of guac in my salad. It was awesome. Awesome. I love guac. How many carbs in a carb up? I like to start off with, um, for every quarter pound that you weigh, start off with one gram of carbs. Years ago, I like to start off small and work your way up. It doesn't need to be a lot. So then we're having some major issues on Periscope. I'm so sorry, guys. It keeps kicking every... Um, Say you weigh 100 pounds, that would be 25 grams of carbs extra. So it's really not that much. Not that a lot of you weigh 100 pounds, but even if it's, say, you're 200 pounds, that's 50 grams of extra carbs. So you're really playing around with that and starting small. I just bought your keto guide and it's amazing. Thank you so much for buying it, Candice. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, is corn a good carb? Is corn a good carb? Uh, for a carb up like fresh corn not chips if you don't react to it and it doesn't cause inflammation I would say go for it um, Just make sure that it's non GMO if you are interested in that or organic. Sorry, you can probably hear my dog drinking her water <laughs> um, But uh, personally it's a grain for me and it, it really aggravates my digestive system and causes a lot of acne like right here I had butter on the weekend and it's all like yucky um, arrowroot, any good for keto? Totally. In your carb up? 100%. Yeah. Potato starch too because it's, uh, it has resistant starch, so that's helpful. You mentioned grass-fed beef. I can't afford organic. Is it okay to get regular meat and chicken and bacon? Do you eat bacon? What do they say? Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> yes. I eat a lot of bacon. Okay. So if you um, are you know, eating keto on a budget... Um, you can uh, you can get more of the lean ground lean ground beef uh, chicken breast and add your own fat the reason I say that is because conventional meat is going to be a little bit higher in environmental toxins it could cause inflammation and the reason that that happens is because all that stuff is stored in the fat of the animal so if you're eating high fat then it's important to make sure that a fat source is good. So say coconut oil is pretty inexpensive. You can get it at Costco, a big, huge bucket of it. I would get the ground beef that's lean and the chicken um, breasts that are lean. And then I would add my own fat to that. That way you make sure that there's minimal hormones because again, the hormones are stored a lot in the fat. So that's kind of how I would go about that. Um, I've been eating plant-based for three years, never saw any sort of weight loss. Alcohol every weekend may be a big culprit. Through my health, though my health greatly improved. Low carb, high fat on the surface looks like I'm going to be cutting out a lot of veggies I've learned to love. Am I just not fully understanding what you eat slash veggies? Yeah, I mean, I was vegan for eight years. Um, and so when I was vegan, I was eating a crap ton of vegetables, <laughs> but I felt like garbage. Um, so now I would say like, if you follow me on Instagram, maybe follow me on Instagram. If you're a little bit, um, curious about what, what like the fat fueled eating style is, you'll notice that like half of every plate that I eat is greens and vegetables and I don't limit like my whole thing is I don't count my kale <laughs> like if I'm gonna have kale I'm gonna have kale um, so you can make it work for you uh, my carbohydrate amount is higher than most people like I can eat 75 to 100 grams of carbs and get into ketosis um, now that my body is fat adapted so once your body is fat adapted you can usually slide back into ketosis a lot quicker because your body um, knows how to burn fat. Um, I am wheat free and grain free and has made a world and it has made a world of difference. Being keto, awesome. Um, I get the coconut oil and grass fed butter. Thank you. Awesome, Anna. I'm glad that my budgeting tips help. So I would just add those to it. Yes. Um, what are we at? Oh my goodness, we got two minutes. I like to keep the periscopes at 20 minutes only. Same here, just happened to realize. Yeah. Are cows or carbs what make you gain weight? Okay, <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, so I, <laughs> this is a multifaceted answer. So the question was, is it calories or carbs that make you gain weight? And I would say both. And the reason why I, why I say that is because 
saying that calories is the only thing that makes us gain weight is ridiculous because there's so much more to the story that we're not touching on. And, um, you know, there's, there's that whole concept of calories in versus calories out and, you know, insulin spiking weight gain and there's all these things. So the basic thing is when you eat too many calories, you gain weight, but there's a lot more to that. And how do I know that? Well, because I'm eating around 3000 calories now and I used to eat 1200 calories now. If I would have ate 3000 calories like five years ago, I would have continued to gain weight, but now I'm not. And the reason why is because your hormones play a huge role in how your body responds to food. The foods you eat have a huge impact on how your body holds weight, etc. So if I eat a crap ton of carbs all the time, I personally am going to gain weight. If I lower my carb amount and increase my fat, I'm going to maintain my weight or lose weight depending on um, calories. So it's, there's so many facets to it. So saying that just one thing causes weight gain is a little bit um, ridiculous. Like I love the example of um, like, do you guys remember being a teenager and going through growth spurts? I remember going home I remember going home and eating like five grilled cheese sandwiches and like seven apples and all the things. I didn't gain weight. My body used all of that stuff and made me taller. Like I'm five foot 10, this girl needed to grow. So there's so much more to, oh, you are a teenager. Oh my gosh, you need to eat all the things. <laughs> um, so you don't, you it, it's, it's hard to look at this whole weight gain thing with just like one, one, you know, ca it's calories or it's carbs because yeah, carbs will spike insulin for, insulin for sure. And if you're having insulin in the morning, it's gonna stop your fat burning and so that's why I move those carbs to the evening because it actually has a better effect. You're burning carbs faster at night when you're sleeping than you are throughout the whole day, okay? So there's so many reasons why I moved that to the evening and it's not an everyday thing. It's just, you know, like sometimes I carb up, you know, four days in a row. And sometimes like the other week I realized I hadn't had a carb up in two weeks. So it really depends on, on your body. Oops, sorry guys, I just touched the microphone. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It's not just calories. Um, best exercises while fasting. I really enjoy fasted more cardio. Um, so I'll go for like a speed walk and I really like that and then I'll have I'll go home and I'll natural shampoo or conditioner so I use like um, color stay sulfite free fat fueled versus bulletproof or Jimmy Moore for women I think I love Jimmy so much he's so great and he does so much research um, I didn't do necessarily personally well on that approach um, because there were limited carbs and it felt like I had to track everything um, but I have some clients previous clients that like loved it so it totally depends uh, bulletproof I hated the protein fasting I felt like poo poo caca <laughs> um, yeah I love Jimmy too but he's not a woman and that's the way I feel it's like there's not a lot of women conversation and what's that's a little bit one-sided i'm gonna answer one more question on facebook live back to keto after losing to your cravings for a few days and end up ruining your diet i blame anti-stress uh, any stress uni stress university got it okay so um i actually had a client email me with the same concern the other day and we went through it's important for her to do this and what was important to her and why you started so um, i would encourage you um, to to give it a whirl and and go through exactly why you started eating this way and why it's important to you and how you feel and all of all of that stuff to kind of reconnect to your purpose and the best thing that you can do is is make a rocket fuel latte and while you're drinking it remember how good you felt on keto and how good you felt eating the way that feels good in your body and just reconnect with that in one moment at a time that's really all you can do but ask yourself um ask yourself why you started this and why you feel really good 
Okay, there was a question about Keto OS, the dairy-free Keto OS. I didn't like it. It tasted horrible. I couldn't, I couldn't drink it. I threw it out. So, uh, it's so sweet. It was, it was so gross. I'm going to try it again a different way, but I just, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was so sweet. Um, okay, so for those of you wondering, I have, okay, I'm going to do this first. If you take a screenshot, this is um, the link to my bundle, which includes Fat Fueled and the Keto Beginning, both of my programs, healthfulpursuit.com forward slash bundle. I guess in the U.S. you guys just say slash. But in Canada, we say forward slash. So you can take a screenshot of that. And um, Rocket Fuel Latte. Google Rocket Fuel Latte. And you can find um, the recipe for that. It's basically a fat drink. And you're good. So with that, I will leave you. I will say adieu. And I will see you guys next Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. I really appreci appreciate. I was about to say appreci. Oh, my gosh. I'm hanging out with my sister too much. Um, you guys stopping in, and I'm sorry the Periscope was such a jerk and kept dropping you. Head on over to Facebook Live because it's way more convenient <laughs> and doesn't drop you. Thanks so much, everyone, and I hope you have a great day and a great weekend, and I will see you next Thursday. Bye.